Good morning. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that uh, I know this is a highly debated topic from um, uh, some of the stuff I've been posting recently about the supposed spoken name of Jesus in Hebrew during his lifetime. Uh, because you know, I don't even have to get into it, but Jesus was a Jew. Yes, he was. Uh, he grew up in the land of the Gentiles in, in Galilee, but he was nonetheless a Jew. That is expressed in his uh, lineage in Matthew chapter 1. Um, so I'm not even going to get into that. But without further ado, I just wanted to explain some stuff from a Textus Receptus and a King James Version Bible perspective of how we got the name Jesus uh, today, why we say Jesus, okay? So I'm going to establish a couple baselines first. First thing I'm going to establish is the fact, this isn't a debate, this is a fact, that Isaiah of the Old Testament his name is written like this Isaiah All right. Isaiah written in the New Testament is like this with an S okay Isaiah alright Elijah in the Old Testament is written like this and Elias which is Elijah in the New Testament is written like this Elias Joshua based upon the Masoretic text his name is written with a yod a he a vav or a wa however you want to say it sheen wa ain okay and it's we transliterated it in the Old Testament as the name Joshua in English. All right. Notice that when the Old Testament was rewritten in Greek, this is the spelling for Joshua in Greek. All right. Jesus' name is spelled exactly the same. In the New Testament, we see this over and over and over again, all throughout the New Testament. Okay? One thing to point out as another baseline is in Acts chapter 7, verse 45, that is a clear contextual story of the name Joshua, but instead the name Jesus is replaced in its place. It should be Joshua, but it says Jesus. Okay? Now, my only only conclusion to that the reason why that is is because when the King James version translators translated the Bible, one of the rules was they had to take the Old Testament in its Hebrew form and translate it into English. They didn't use uh, Septuagint. They took it straight from the Hebrew. Okay? Uh, so they just understood that it was Joshua. So that's why you see the name Joshua all throughout the Old Testament. Okay? Now, in the New Testament, you see this all the time. All the time. Even in Acts chapter 7, verse 45. Which is why they put the name Jesus there instead of Joshua, like it should have been. Because clearly, I'm not going to go into it, you can look up the verse and the verses surrounding Acts chapter 7 verse 45. It's clearly talking about the story, uh, you know, accounting for Joshua. Uh, you can look that up yourself, don't take my word for it. Okay, so, one thing you have to understand. Since we established a few baselines already, I want to go into some discrepancies. Uh, it's not really, it, I'm not making the King James Version fallible. I'm not saying that it's 
aired. I'm saying that it is translated in a way that the English-speaking people understood at that time. Isaiah, and this can be proven with this, Isaiah becomes Isaiah, Elijah becomes Elias. Notice that the sounding of the ends of both of Isaiah and Elijah in the Old Testament is because they use the Hebrew Masoretic text to get Isaiah and Elijah. Now, when they translate the New Testament, they just use Greek. And here's the Greek spelling of Isaiah. It's Eta Sigma. Um, what was that? Uh, alpha. Iota, Alpha, and then a final sigma. That final sigma. That's what. That's why we have Isaiah instead of Isaiah. Isaiah, and Elijah becomes Elias because they transliterated the final sigma from the Greek spelling. That's why, because this right here is how it's written in the New Testament. This is actually a Septuagint. Uh, version right here. Um, I will uh, just make note of that really quick. But here's how it's spelled in the New Testament. Isaiah. Okay. Eta, Sigma, Alpha, Iota, um, Upsilon. I'm sorry, not Upsilon. Omicron, Upsilon. Okay. And it also has references to the Sigma on the end. That's why... Um, they got S's added on to the end. Um, another example of that is Elisha in the Old Testament. They got Elisha because they took the Masoretic text. Aleph, Lamed, Yod, Sheen, Ayin. That's why we have Elisha. But in the New Testament, the Mass... Uh, majority of the of the Textus Receptus uses this. Okay, they use a epsilon, lambda, iota, sigma, uh, alpha, iota, omicron, final sigma, elesus, elesus. That is Elisha. Elesus in the New Testament, when it's written in English, is the Elisha of the Old Testament. You can read that verse in uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 27 to confirm that. Um, it is contextual. It is definitely talking about Elisha. So you have to understand. Sha. Remember that. Sha. Okay. Remember that. Why did we ever get Elisha? Because the sheen. That sh sound. Okay. And I already... I already told you guys the other day, this is not something that's debatable. This is an absolute fact that the Phoenician scripts, um, the Hebrew uh, characters, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalet, He, Zayin, Heth, Teth, Yod, Kop, Mem, Nun, Samak, Ayin, Pe, Shin, Ta, Wa, or Vav, however you want to say it. All give rise to the Greek alphabet. Okay, you got Alpha, Aleph, Beth, Beta, Gimel, Gamma, Dalit, Delta, He, Epsilon. Not all of them are perfect. Uh, Zayin, Zeta, um, Heth. Um, for this one, is a uh, Eta. Teth, Theta, Yod, or Jod, Iota, Kaf, Kappa, Mem, Mu, uh, Nun, Nu, uh, Samic is, I believe, uh, Z, Ayin, Omicron, Pe, Pi, Sheen, Sigma. Remember that. Sheen gives rise to Sigma. So the Sigma... When the, when the uh, disciples transliterated the name Jesus, we got Jesus out of it, but he transliterated the sh sound, okay? I explain this more. 
Um, <clears throat> here's some of the Hebrew to English transliterations into the English of Old Testament characters. Um, Isaiah, the Hebrew uh, equivalent would be Yeshaya. Uh, you can use Psalm 119 to confirm this sounding. Anytime you ever see the Y, you can interject with the J. So it could be Jesheja or Isaiah. Isaiah. All right, now get that. J's and Y's are interchangeable. Even Pastor Anderson admits that in his video, just like in Spanish, yo, yo, uh, the like the pronoun for I in Spanish. Um, he even admits that they're interchangeable. So you can pretty much will say yod and jod are the same. You can use it, and it gives more credence to the fact that we pronounce it Isaiah, Yeshaya, because Isaiah. Isaiah, it makes that uh sound, the ya uh sound. All right, so just understand that. So, with that being said, I want to get into um, the type of the Masoretic text, Hebrew characters that were used for Joshua. Joshua, right? You got Yod, the ya, uh, Hey, so Yahu. The wa is in there as well. So you hold shu the sh sound wa and then a the ayin to emphasize. So ya shu wa because you read it from right to left in Hebrew. Same thing with this. The iota, remember the iota, it's uh, descended from the yod. All right, that's a proven fact. The yod gives rise to the iota. So when the disciples wrote the name Jesus, as we call it, they were actually making a y sound. And that's proven with the fact of when you hear Greek, they called him Yesus. Yeah, yeah, Yesus, right? It's a Y sound with that I right there, the iota. That's a Y sound. The next letter is an eta. So, yeah. The Y-E, okay? Ita comes from Heth, okay? Heth, the Phoenician script Heth gives rise to the uh, the uh, Ita. All right, so it's yeah. All right, now remember, Sigma comes from Sheen, okay? That can be proven because Joshua, in the Old Testament, they wrote it like this when they finally transliterated it to Greek. The sh, yesh, yoshu, okay? The sh sound. All right, so Jesus and Joshua's name look identical. So you have to ask yourself, why wouldn't they be pronounced similar? The next letter we'll go into is the Omicron for both. The Omicron, remember, comes from Ayin, okay? Yeshu, it's a connector sound, it's a pharyngeal fricative. It's not commonly pronounced in English, which is why they got rid of the O when it was I-E-S-O-U-S. -S. They got rid of the O when it became Jesus, that's why it just became J-E-S-U-S. -S. They got rid of the O, okay? Uh, so, just understand that. And then the last character that is to be pronounced is the uh, Upsilon. Okay, the Upsilon comes from the Wa, so Yeshua, now remember, Yehoshua, Yehoshua, which is why we got Joshua, okay, that's why we have that pronunciation of the word, Joshua, Yoshua, Yeshua. Okay, and you have to remember, it sounds a little bit different than what Joshua's is going to sound. Because you have to remember, Aramaic and Hebrew, it's a, common, it's a commonly known thing amongst Hebrew scholars uh, and, and ancient uh, language scholars that Aramaic and Hebrew were very similar but slightly different, which uh, would give rise to it sounding a little bit different. Okay. Now, if we were being fair in the rules 
of how we know Isaiah and Elijah became Isaiah and Elias, you could go ahead and just leave that final sigma off and say Isaiah and Eliah, right? Same thing with this. If you wanted to be fair with the ruling and not transliterate the final sigma on Jesus, it should be Yesu or Yeshu, right? Yeshu. Because we got rid of the O, first off, the S should have never been transliterated. I already proved that in the other videos with uh, the name, the original Greek names. If you transliterated English, it would have been uh, Maria's. I actually believe I still got that here. Hold on. Yep, right there. This is in the New Testament. That is the word that we transliterate in English as Mary. Technically, it's Maria. You don't use the final sigma. The final sigma is just to denote that the word is a name. Just like Timotheos, okay? If we were being fair, in a fair English transliteration, it should have been... It should have been just Yesu or Jesu. Alright. So, that being said, go through some of the sounding out of the words. Okay. You got Jod or Yod. See, oh, we're going to go Joshua right now. Yod, He, Wa, Sheen, Wa, Ain. Yod, He, Wa, Sheen wa ain makes a jeho wa jeho sheen shu wa okay jehoshua is the closest we think we can get to it all right aleph lamed jod or yod hey is aleya Elijah, Ali, Elijah, Elijah, right? Aleph, Lamed, Jod, Sheen, Ain, Ali, Elisha, Elisha, right? Jod, Sheen, Ain, Jod, He, Wa, Yeshe, Yeshaya, Isaiah, Yeshaya. Isaiah. That is the writings for them in the Old Testament. Okay? Now understand this. This is probably going to sound like a Jewish fable to most people, but I believe with all my heart and soul, and I've asked the Father, I've asked the Lord, and I've prayed diligently on this. But one thing a lot of people don't know about the Hebrew language, about the Aramaic Hebrew language, is that each character had a specific inner meaning behind it and i can prove that i can prove that doctrinally too by examining certain words uh all throughout the bible and looking at them in their original uh, aramaic hebrew form but i'll go over a few right now we know this right here is the uh this one is the tetragrammaton this is the name of the lord this is Yod, He, Va, He, Yahuwah, or Yahweh, some people say it. We transliterate that as the Lord all throughout the Bible. <clears throat> Joshua's name is just like God's name, Yod, He, Va, or Wa, and then Sheen, Wa, Ain. That's Joshua's name, which is a type of Jesus, which is spelled like Jesus' name. And that's confirmed in Old Testament, New Testament, Greek. Hence, the, the name that should have been Joshua in Acts 7.45. Because the translators were so used to seeing the name that we call Jesus in the New Testament, that when they got to this verse, they just said, Yep, Jesus. 
and wrote Jesus there instead of Joshua. All right, another thing. I'll prove this. Yod, this is cool. Yod means, it has not just the Y or J sound, but it mean, it has an inner meaning that means a finished work. Uh, the old Paleo-Hebrew, it looked like a, a hand, an arm and a hand. Uh, it means a finished work. He means behold, to show or to reveal. Wa or Vav, a nail, a tent peg, becoming bound. Sheen means teeth, dividing, cut, destroy. Ayin means fountain, look, or see. Uh, there's other meanings behind these. I just wrote a few down for sake of time. Um, but Ayin can actually be confirmed to be fountain um, because Ayin actually means fountain in Hebrew. You can look that up in the Old Testament. Um, okay, so let's break this down really quick. Let's look at Joshua's name and see what it means. Yod, a finished work. Hey, something to be revealed, a finished work to be revealed. Wa, a nail. <laughs> a nail, becoming bound. A finished work to be revealed, becoming bound, destroyed. Right? And it reiterates that with another wa. But he is the fountain. He is the everlasting life. Look upon him. See him. The mission is in the name. Yehoshua literally means God is salvation. Because you look at the first root word right here, it's the beginning of the Lord's name. Yod He Va. Shin Va Ain literally means if you just look at that word <laughs> in the Hebrew, Sha means to save. God saves. Now, when you look at that, isn't that a very fitting name? When Jesus, or Yeshua, came to this world, and that was his name. It makes perfect sense with Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. His name was named Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. God saves. If you think that's too much of a stretch, I don't know what else to say. If you have ears to hear... Let yourself hear. Amen and God bless.